Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Let's kick off our PAX coverage with something that didn't make it to PAX. So here's a bit of a unique situation, and I'm going to be honest, I felt somewhat sorry for the developers of this game as a result of what happened, and I'm going to give them their own little PAX right here on the channel. So, Potions A Curious Tale is a crafting-focused action RPG game in which you play a witch who crafts various potions in order to blow up the monsters that she encounters or do various other things. Now, this game was supposed to be at PAX and we were planning on booking an appointment for it. However, as we discovered from the developer, some weird things happened. They were offered a spot at the Indie Mega booth and they were quoted a price for the booth and they were quoted a time in which they had to pay. Now, they came back much, much earlier than that and said, okay, we've got the money, we're willing to pay, we're ready to go. And then PAX told them, uh, sorry, we don't have the booth space anymore, despite having promised them the booth space earlier. This obviously sucks phenomenally, and it's really unfortunate that this miscommunication or lack of organization occurred, so they won't be able to show the game at PAX, which is unfortunate because they're trying to crowdfund for the rest of the development. So I decided to give them their own little booth right here on the channel. We're going to look a little bit of this very early prototype demo for Potions A Curious Tale developed by Stumbling Cat Games. It is currently on Kickstarter, and the link to said Kickstarter is in the description below this video if you wish to go and check it out. Bear in mind, everything you're going to see is very, very early on in development, so it's by no means done. No, no, no. So, as I said, it's an action RPG focused on the brewing of potions and the use of said potions to blow up enemies. So, the character on the screen right now is the main character who is accompanied by some sort of gold ethereal cat thing. And you have to the bottom a hot bar which can contain a number of different potion types. The default potion that we have is a small explosive potion. We're going to use that to uh, blow up the spider which wishes to eat us for dinner right there. And there we go. Now you might notice that there are numbers on the hot bar. This indicates how many of the potion that you have. This game is described as being limited resource in terms of combat. So what they wanted was to create a game in which you did not have infinite ammunition, you had to craft your ammunition, you had to be very careful with the kind of potions that you use. And of course, these potions would vary in power, but would also vary in the difficulty to create them. So you can see right here I'm gathering some resources into my satchel which I'll be able to use in the hut later on in order to craft different kinds of potions. The game at launch is supposed to have 120 different potion recipes which range from basic things like the explosive potion there to acid and freezing and some really weird stuff like the confetti bomb as well as literally a bottle of water which does as you might expect absolutely nothing <laughs> but so there you go but it exists the crafting system is supposed to encourage creativity and experimentation that's fairly rare. One of the biggest beefs that I have with games that claim to have a crafting system is that most of the crafting system is in fact just a factory production line. You have a blueprint, you put specific ingredients in, and you create the recipe, and you can't create the end product without having the recipe prior to that, which means it's not really about experimentation, it's just about finding the right recipe. Now, there are some games that have done experimentation pretty well. A great example of that would actually be all the way back in the Dreamcast era, a game called Power Stone 2, which was a four-player arena brawler game, which also had a crafting system in it in order to create weapons which would spawn in the arena. Now, that game really did encourage experimentation. You could put whatever you wanted into the machine, and hopefully something good would come out of it. Most of the time, if you put the wrong stuff in, it wouldn't. But maybe you get something rare, maybe you get something cool, and that kept you coming back for more. And it also gave you a use for all of those other ingredients that you didn't really want to use in any other way. You just tossed them into the machine, hopefully created some kind of new weapon. And that is exactly what this game is supposed to do as well. You notice here we're in some sort of witch hut, and by clicking on the cauldron, we'll be able to craft a few different recipes. Now, it's not to say that once you've learned a recipe, you won't be able to immediately recreate it. You can do that, but you are also encouraged just to toss random ingredients into the pot to see exactly what will happen. Ingredients are generally quite plentiful, so it's not too risky to just experiment and see whether or not you can figure out a different potion. So, let's show you a potion now. The tutorial is demonstrating that. I combine spider silk. Here we go with a feather and time and I will be able eventually to create a particular kind of potion. 
And notice we've got a couple of potions up to the top left there in our inventory. There we go. Click the craft button, into the pot it goes. And as a result, we get the magic floor cleanup, which is not exactly useful. But hey, you know, it's, it's laundry detergent, I suppose, or cleaning fluid one way or the other. Very practical. There are, needless to say, far more interesting recipes available. So let me show you a few of those. These are some potions that I made earlier. Potion seller, I'm going into battle, and I need only your strongest potions. So we shall make some strongest potions. I'm gonna throw some water crystals in there, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of seasoning, add some more water crystals, and what do we get? We get a freezing potion. Like I said, there's going to be a ton of these, and they will vary in power based on the rarity of ingredients. You can mass produce these once you've learned the recipe from the recipe book. So you don't have to put everything in the pot every single time you want to make these things, especially bearing in mind they're all consumable and generally things that you throw at the enemy. So you don't necessarily want something that's going to take a long time, obviously. And uh, craft together two of these, and that makes a potion of flame. Now, if we make two potions of flame and combine them with something else, we can make a fire concentrate which is a much much more powerful potion there and there's another potion of flame so let's create the fire concentrate after that so we toss in a spider fang and two potions of flame and we will get your strongest potion which is a flame concentrate now i'm going to throw it at a turkey that turkey does not give a damn that i just threw a powerful fire potion at it Maybe don't fight the turkey. Interestingly enough, the turkey drops a bunch of feathers and there are actually ways of getting the feathers without damaging it. It's scared of things that fly, so if you jump on your broomstick and chase it around, it'll actually drop the feathers, which I thought was a neat little feature there. That is a... I think it's some kind of giant water spear potion. It's a very, very angry on fire bird that's doing damage to me, but it does not care. Like, this thing is almost invincible. That was a freezing potion I missed. I'm hopeless at it. What can I say? Let's throw another one. That... That was laundry detergent. It, it doesn't care about that either. It's probably got slight eye irritation, but that's really about it. Uh, down some potions to get my health back. There's a little bit more fire for it. It's kind of amusing. The turkey is not supposed to be killed, at least by mortal means. So that is that is deliberate, so don't worry about it. I do find it quite amusing nonetheless, though. So the concept of the game I do find to be very intriguing. I like the idea of having a crafting focused game, absolutely. I like the fact that it's a little bit of an action RPG and I do like the aesthetic, but obviously this is a game that's very early in development, so there are definitely issues that need to be addressed with it. The biggest issue that I've got with the game at the moment is that the animation quality is very basic. So as to how responsive throwing the potions actually is when you throw down your input, well, not particularly. It's a little bit slow. A lot of the attacks have some wind up. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that per se, but obviously there's a lot of work still to be done there. And the quality of the animation, the responsiveness of the animation is directly correlated to how good the game feels in the hands of the player. So I think it's very important to deal with that. I'd also say the UI probably needs a little bit of work. I'm not 100% keen on that font choice, for instance. Might be a little bit difficult to read for a lot of people. That may very well be worth changing to something that's sans serif as opposed to a fancy serif font. I do like the stylization, but simultaneously it's often good to have more clarity, make it a little bit easier to actually read it. It's a lot of like art development and polishing around the edges that I feel it needs to make the game more user friendly and more attractive. It's not that I don't like the art style I do. It's almost as if though the art style was designed for static images as opposed to something that's actually supposed to be in motion. That's something that can be fixed, no doubt about it, but it is worth bringing up for continued development. Another thing I'll say is that there's a mounting mechanic in the game which allows you to jump on a broomstick. It's almost overpowered, I think. You can jump on the broomstick frankly, instantly, and you'll be able to escape almost any threat because the enemy wind-up time on the attacks is really, really long. So that means there's really no threat outside of getting boxed into a corner or something along those lines. At the moment, the demo also doesn't let you hearthstone, I suppose, back to your location. It actually puts you back at the start of the demo. They did say that they would fix that and also would be thinking about adding a mini-map so that you'd be able to figure out exactly where you're going. But, of course, this is all stuff that will happen later on in the development cycle. Does need to happen, though, no doubt about that. Having to restart the level every time you jump back to base in order to craft more ammunition is not exactly the sort of thing that you'd really want. 
In its current state, the game is extremely rough around the edges, there's no doubt about that, and would need to see just how much content is added in, how enjoyable the combat becomes when you've got more advanced potions and deal with more advanced enemies and boss fights and all sorts of things like that, how exactly the story ends up developing, and whether or not the crafting system ends up continuing to be enjoyable as you go through the game, as opposed to more of a chore. I mean, obviously, I'm warping back to the hut over and over again here to make different kinds of potions. But in the gameplay, once you've got enough potions in your satchel, you shouldn't really need to do that. And you should be able to just continue onwards. And it's got a lot of potential. And if you believe the same, then there is a Kickstarter page in the description below this video. Obviously, we'll see how it goes. It's too early to really say whether or not it's going to end up being a good game, but I do like the fact that it's focused on this really interesting experimentation-based crafting system. There are not all that many games that do that, and the combination of increasingly ridiculous potions, magic effects, the ability to freeze yourself and cause all sorts of havoc gives me that Magicka vibe. It seems like a potential comedy of errors and something that really rewards taking risks and experimenting and all that sort of thing. I dig that. It's not a common attribute amongst all that many games these days. A lot of work still to do. Very, very rough around the edges. Absolutely. But promising. Has the potential to be a very, very enjoyable game once it's done. My name's been Total Biscuit, taking a quick look here at the very early prototype version of Potions, a curious tale. Kickstarter link is in the description below this video if you wish to check that out. For more PAX coverage, check back on the channel over the next week or so. We have more than 15 interesting looking games coming from PAX over the next week or so to show you as well as a few surprises snuck in here and there. My name's been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then by all means, do feel free to click the like button. If you did not, well, the dislike button is right over there. And I'll see you next time.